वेरी गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन माई नेम इज शुभम सिंह हानिया एंड आई एम योर मैंटर फॉर दिस पर्टिकुलर सब्जेक्ट दैट इज मैनेजमेंट आंसर राइटिंग सेशन तो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल विद ग्रेट प्लेजर एंड इनसाइट आई वुड लाइक टू शेयर विथ यू ऑल अ वेरी वंडरफुल न्यूज दैट यस्टरडे द रिजल्ट ऑफ यू पी एस सी सी एस सी ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वर रिलीज एंड वन ऑफ आर स्टूडेंट हु वॉज इनरोल्ड इन आर मैनेजमेंट ऑप्शनल बैच हेज सिक्योर्ड ऑल इंडिया रैंक वन फिफ्टी सिक्स एंड वन सच रीजन विच हैज एक्चुअली हेल्प डर्स विच हैज बीन इंस्ट्रूमेंटल इन हर परफॉर्मेंस एंड सक्सेस इज द कॉन्स्टेंट आंसर राइटिंग सेशन एंड नाउ आई कैन नॉट ओवर एम्फोसाइज द रेलिवेंट ऑफ रेलिवेंस ऑफ आंसर राइटिंग सेशन फॉर आर बी आई ग्रेड बी ऑल्सो सो इन दिस पर्टिकुलर सेशन आई एम गोइंग टू स्पेसिफिकली टॉक अबाउट वॉट आर सम ऑफ द एस्पेक्ट दैट यू नीड टू टेक केयर वाइल यूर फॉर्मुलेटिंग योर आंसर देन आई एम ऑल्सो गोइंग टू टेल यू वॉट आर द वेरियस मिस्टेक्स दैट स्टूडेंट्स हैव ऑफ एन बीन कमिटिंग वाइल राइटिंग द आंसर because i have been checking your mock test answers for a very long period of time now and also then i'm going to show you a sample answer that is going to be specifically on corporate governance because a lot of students have been requesting the same and then i'm going to show you the sample answer a model answer kind of a thing as to how can you write a perfect answer so let's get started without wasting any further time so first thing that i'm going to focus upon is going to be some important points for your answer writing so before you begin with your answer writing aspect you need to understand that what is the expectation of an answer uh, examiner uh, when you are writing an answer so answer writing is not a haphazard way where you can just read the question and you can start writing the answer there has to be a proper structure there has to be a proper format of writing the answer then only you will be able to follow a systematic pattern and why i saying this because when an examiner is checking let's say 50 odd copies he is checking around let's say 50 copies a day you have to stand apart in terms of the other people who are writing the exam or other people who are writing the answer and therefore it is very important that you follow a systematic pattern where there is a proper structure there is a proper examples which are given there are proper keywords which you are mentioning so i'm going to talk about all of this particular things in this particular session so first thing that you need to understand that there is going to be a standard operating procedure the moment you read a particular question in order to answer that okay so they going to be very simple steps but they are very crucial and i'm going to tell you every now and then that even though i'm going to emphasize upon them a lot a lot of students are not going to actually follow them they're going to listen to me they're going to hear me they're going to forget after few days they'll not be implementing it and that is exactly what our student did she was very consistent throughout the year in following all of these steps and that is how she improved the quality of her answer so what are these steps let's talk about them one by one So the first step is in the standard operating procedure is identification of the keywords. So the moment you get to see a question, the moment you get to read a question, the first step should be rather than jumping to write the answer should be to identify what are the specific keywords given in the question. Because if you are not able to mention the keywords while writing your answers or probably if you have not picked up the keywords right, you are going to write anything in the answer and that will not fetch you marks. So the first aspect is identification of relevant keywords from your question that should be the first step so let's say you read the question spend the first initial one or two minutes in order to identify the keywords and formulate a standard operating procedure you need to follow that very sincerely very committed so the first aspect is going to be identification of keywords the second is going to be structuring and sequencing your answers in bullet points see the moment you read the question there are going to be thousands of things that are going to come into your mind so your approach should be that after identification of keywords you start making a list and you start creating a structure as to how you are going to write your answer there is a very famous quote by abraham lincoln that he says that if he is being given let's say 6 hours to chop a tree he is going to spend 4 hours sharpening an axe that basically means that you need to plan your answer first before you actually start writing before you start executing the answer so the first part is going to be identification of keyword the second part is going to be that you formulate some bullet points and you structure an answer before you actually start writing so how can you structure the first part is going to be introduction now what is the purpose of writing an introduction an introduction is a message a hint to the examiner that you have understood the topic and you have to just define or you have to just write about the topic or the concept which has been touched upon so that is going to be the purpose of introduction do not spend a lot of time because time is also going to be a very crucial factor do not spend too much of time in the introduction portion just define the concept explain about the meaning of that concept and then move forward 
the second is going to be the main body so what you can do whatever points are coming in your mind at that particular moment while you have read the question just jot down those points three four pointers whatever are coming in your mind and at the very same time if you are able to recall some examples relevant to those pointers some facts which are relevant to those points make a note of it so what you are doing initially one or two minutes you are spending in structuring your answer okay and then finally if you have something which you want to lay emphasis or in your conclusion portion you can also curate pointer for that so right now what you are doing we are just jotting down the pointers in the initial one or two minutes and after we have done that the third step is going to be writing of your actual answer so these are very simple three steps identification of keyword structuring and then writing so ideally we just have to follow the first two steps which are going to be very crucial if you want to actually write a good answer okay now what are some of the mistakes that students have been making while writing the answer and then they come across that sir we are not able to identify what are the mistakes we have done why we are scoring low in terms of our marks so these are some very basic mistakes that you have to avoid okay the first is spending too much time on introduction for example let's say if the question is asking you what are the quantitative instruments of rbi that they are going to use what are the quantitative instrument now you will not spend too much time on explaining what is the function of rbi what does rbi do so on and so forth just define what are the quantitative instruments in one or two lines and move towards the instruments so do not spend over spend your time on introduction the second is beating around the bush these competitive exams such as rbi grade b is not your graduation or post graduation exam where you can just beat around the bush that okay you know something about the topic and you start writing that actually you are going to get penalized for that you are not going to get any marks for that so if the question is asking you elaborate about the functions of rbi talk about the functions of rbi not the features of rbi not the instruments of rbi be very specific in terms of your answers the third is which the students often ignore is grammatical and spelling mistakes do not make basic spelling mistakes basic grammatical mistakes in your answer you need to work upon that okay there are various software these days coming up with which you can improve your grammar grammarly is one such software so make use of grammarly while practicing it is going to help you improve your grammar okay next is not answering all parts of the question many a time you are going to see that there are two questions which are asked two aspects of the questions which are asked in one particular question for example it is asking you what is the function of rbi first part of the question let's say is function of rbi and then it is also asking you what are the various instruments that can actually help you control money supply in the economy so many a times in terms of being very hurried in terms of writing the answers in a very quick manner students often forget to answer all parts of the question you have to remember that when the marks are allocated they are allocated based on the various parts of the question so let's say in this particular question 7.5 marks might be allocated to the first part and 7.5 marks are allocated to the second part so that means if you're not answering the second part or if you're not answering the second part properly you're going to get less marks okay so you have to make sure that you're writing on all parts of the questions okay the third aspect is time management very very crucial now when i have been checking the recently conducted mock tests which are provided in your course what i noticed is that students are spending too much time on their 15 mark question and when it comes to to their 10 mark question they are hardly spending 5 to 7 minutes and therefore the quality of the answers are not coming nicely so you have to make sure at least you should practice in that sense that for 15 marks you should ideally be taking 25 to 30 minutes that should be the average timing and for 10 marks you should be taking 15 to 20 minutes this is how you can target because you have four questions to answer and you have 90 minutes overall given to you in order to answer these four questions so that is how you can divide your time and i'm very sure if this is how you're going you will be able to answer all four questions and you will be able to answer them adequate okay next is not using keywords now see management is one such subject where you can write general answer for example if i ask you that what are the various skills which are required to be learned by the manager let's say this is the question now even a layman can tell you that okay decision making skill is required leadership skill is required management skill is required so you can write a very generic answer but if you are writing generic answer then you cannot expect to get very high marks you can only expect to get generic marks only because if somebody is asking about the specific skills of management or let's say manager you have to talk about the technical skills you need to talk about the conceptual skills you need to talk about human relation skills so you have to make use of those keywords which are specifically part of your syllabus or let's say which are specifically given in your notes because 
when an examiner sees these keywords, he is able to make that distinction that okay, this particular person has not written a generic answer. Okay, so try to make use of keywords as much as possible. Okay, next is not writing examples. Another important mistake done by student is not giving examples. So let's say even if they are giving the examples, they are just mentioning one or two examples in one point and they are not mentioning the other examples in other points. So let's say it's a 15 mark question and if you have written let's say seven, eight points, try to give examples in every point possible. Do not just focus on just writing one or two examples for the sake of writing it and then leaving the other pointers as it is. Try to give as many examples as possible. At least one example in every point can be given wherever possible. Okay. And the last mistake is exceeding word limit. You already know that for your 10 mark question, the approximate word limit is 400 words. Okay. And for a 15 mark question, the approximate word limit is 600 words. So do not exceed the word limit. Okay. And at the very same time, try to reach closer to your word limit. So let's say for a 600 mark, uh, 600 word questions, you can go ahead around 480 or 520 words. And for 400 words uh, limit, you can go around 350 or 300 words. Okay. So the focus has to be on the quality of answer rather than the quantity of words. Okay. So these are some of the mistakes. Now what we are going to do, I'm going to move forward. I'm going to go you a, show you a sample question that is specifically from corporate governance. Okay which is a part of your management syllabus. And I'm going to also tell you how can you make use of standard operating procedure quickly. And then I'm going to show you the model answer. Okay. So the question says, let's read the question. What do you mean by the concept of corporate governance? This is our question. Explain the various theories of corporate governance and the marks given is 15 marks. Now you already know that there are two parts of the question. So let's begin with our standard operating procedure quickly. So the first step was to identify the keywords. So what are the keywords? concept of corporate governance. This is the first keyword. And the second one is theories of corporate governance. So you have to make sure that you're touching upon these two aspects and you're making use of these two keywords while writing your answer. Okay. Let's move to the second step that is to curate a structure. So what I'm going to talk about in, in the introduction section, I'm going to basically define what is corporate governance briefly, not too much, not very detailed, but just defining the concept of corporate governance main body. I'm going to talk about the various theories of corporate governance along with examples. So see, now this is an important topic where the theories are being discussed upon. So if you give examples, it is going to improve the quality of your answer. So very quickly, what I'm going to do, I'm going to jot down the theories that I'm able to recall. If I'm able to recall the examples, I will be jotting down the examples as well. So what are the main theories? The first theory is agency theory. The second is stewardship theory. The third one is stakeholders theory. And the fourth one is resource dependence theory. If you have any kind of data, if you have any kind of facts, if you have any kind of examples at this particular moment, you should at least jot it down because it might happen that if you do not structure it now, while you're writing the, your answer, you might forget them. Okay. So it's better to first jot it down. And the third is, let's say if you plan to write the conclusion part, you can mention how are these theories getting linked to the concept of corporate governance. Okay. So in the initial one or two minutes, you can spend time like this and curate a standard operating procedure talking about these aspects. Okay. Now let's go to the question and see what could be a sample model answer for this particular question. I'm going to go very slow because I'm going to talk about the concept also. And then what I've done, I've also highlighted the important keywords so that you are able to identify what you have to do. I understand probably in the examination, you do not get this opportunity of highlighting it in yellow or from any other color, but at least you can focus upon these keywords so that when the examiner is reading these answers, he will be able to pick up on that. You have mentioned these keywords. Okay. So the question remains the same. Let's move to the answer. So first, as I mentioned, I'm going to talk about the meaning of corporate governance. And that is exactly what I've done. Corporate governance refers to the system and processes by which corporations are directed and controlled. So I've highlighted these keywords. It includes the relationship between a company's management, board of directors, shareholders, and other stakeholders. So I've also talked about, since the question is talking about the concept, I've also talked about the relationship between companies management and various other stakeholders. Okay. So that much is going to be more than sufficient in order to elaborate upon the concept of corporate governance. Now there are various theories. So I'm going to talk about the various theories now. Okay. The first theory, please focus upon the keywords. The keywords are very important here. Agency theory posits that, that there's a fundamental conflict of interest between the shareholders and the management. Now the base, the basic premise of agency theory is the conflict of interest between shareholders and the management because shareholders are going to make investment and they're going to derive maximum gain in terms of dividends of profits. 
वेर एज इफ आई टॉक अबाउट मैनेजमेंट दे गोइंग टू गेट सैलरीज दे गोइंग टू गेट कॉम्पेंसेटेड सो देयर ऑब्जेक्टिव कैन डिफर फ्रॉम द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ शेयर होल्डर्स दैट इज मैक्सिमाइजेशन ऑफ शेयर होल्डर्स वेल्थ सो आई हैव टू टॉक अबाउट द मेजर एस्पेक्ट ऑफ दैट पर्टिकुलर थ्योरी राइटिंग एनी थिंग अबाउट द थ्योरी इज नॉट गोइंग टू हेल्प मी गेन मार्क्स तो वट आई टॉक्ट अबाउट इज द कॉन्फ्लिक्ट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट बिटवीन द मैनेजमेंट एंड द शेयर होल्डर्स ओके ना वट इज द ऑब्जेक्टिव द आइडिया बिहाइंड थ्योरी बिकॉज it has to be linked in terms of corporate governance this is not a generic theory so i talk about the theory argues that corporate governance should be designed to align the interest of managers with those of the shareholders so the whole objective of incorporating agency theory in corporate governance is to align the interest of managers with those of shareholders okay so the theory has been discussed upon okay and now i'm moving to the example an example of agency theory in action is the use of executive compensation packages again highlighted the keywords such as stock option bonuses to incentivize the manager to act in the best interest of the shareholders now understand like this that since there is an inherent conflict of interest between shareholders and the management if they are incentivized by giving them executive compensation packages where you can include stock option where you can include esops where you can give bonuses to them they are going to be incentivized and they are going to take decisions which are going to be in the interest of the shareholders so that is going to be a very properly explained examples in 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 the context of agency theory okay moving towards the second theory now if i talk about the second theory stewardship theory stewardship theory is based on the idea that manage, managers are stewards of the company and they have fiduciary duty stewards because they are going to hold the assets and the decisions based on uh, the shareholders and therefore they have to act in the best interest of shareholders okay so that is the major premise of stewardship theory and they also have a fiduciary duty which is a very crucial duty because the shareholders have given their trust their funds they have invested a lot of money into the company and therefore they are acting on behalf of shareholders so they have to act in the best interest if you have put trust on somebody there is a responsibility on them okay now unlike agency theory which assumes that managers are self interested stewardship theory argues that managers are motivated by sense of responsibility and commitment so this is the basic premise of stewardship theory i also made a distinction between agency theory and the stewardship theory here itself okay then let's move to the example an example of stewardship theory in action is the practice of appointing independent directors to a company board independent directors are not employed by the company and therefore are less likely to have conflict of interest now since independent directors we have already discussed this while we were discussing the lectures of corporate governance and i believe that you will know this that independent directors do not have any pecuniary interest with the company okay so since they do not have any pecuniary interest with the company they are going to act in the best interest of the company okay they are going to be independent in terms of their decisions okay let's move to the third theory of corporate governance which is the stakeholder theory now stakeholder theory argues that corporations have a responsibility to the wide range of stakeholders and not just shareholders they are responsible towards employees they are responsible towards customers suppliers broader community at large and the whole objective of inculcating stakeholder theory in corporate governance is to make sure that the interest of all the stakeholders is balanced if you are noticing here i am trying to highlight all the major keywords which are the basic basic elements of this patlar theory so if you are mentioning these keywords the examiner is going to make note of it and you are going to see improvement in your marks okay now if i have to talk about the example an example of stakeholder theory in action is the adoption of corporate social responsibility policies now you already know companies act has incorporated a section where they are emphasizing the use of csr csr fund in fact for the community service project for various other initiatives as well so if the company is spending a lot of money spending a lot of points in terms of csr activities it is somehow looking after the concerns of various stakeholders okay so that was the third theory now let's move to the fourth theory resource dependence theory now resource dependence theory posits that organizations are dependent on external resources such as capital labor information etc and this dependence creates power imbalances between organization and stakeholders so if i have to give an example here if you have let's say only one supplier who is providing you raw material what is going to happen in case of crisis he is going to take advantage of it okay and he is going to ask for more money more prices for the raw materials that is going to provide so resource resource dependence theory in terms of corporate governance says that the idea should be that you should be less dependent on your stakeholders and they should not be able to leverage out or exploit you in terms of 
prominent situation so let's say if in this particular case you had three four suppliers with you any one supplier will not be able to exploit you will not be able to take leverage out of you okay so whole idea is to make sure that the organization has access to resources as and when they need and they're not exploited by the external firms or other suppliers so that is going to be the major premise of resource dependence theory again we have highlighted the keywords here now let's talk about the example here an example of resource dependence theory in action is the practice of building strategic alliances strategic alliances means making some kind of alliances with the suppliers making loyal customers in your side towards your side so that whenever such crisis comes up okay you are able to use such strategic links linkages you are able to use such resources for your own benefit for example you must have seen that if there's any rumor that comes up for any firm what happens their pr public relations department start putting up some previous good activities good deeds that have been done by the firm or the organization this is one way of making use of resource dependence theory because now they have built a pr now one is the internal pr which is within the department and one is the external pr in terms of the ngos to which the firms or the organizations have been funding or have been doing good for these ngos or other other business firms okay so now when it it's time for uh, giving back these firms are going to come forward and they're going to support these firms okay so that is how you can talk about the example of resource dependence theory now never forget it's always a good idea to conclude in two three lines whatever you have written okay whatever you have given in the answer so what i have written in the conclusion part in conclusion these are some of the most prominent theories of corporate governance each with its unique perspective though there are four theories but each of these theories are talking about a unique perspective a unique domain and how corporation should be directed and controlled by understanding these theories company can design effective governance structure that balances the interest of all stakeholders and ensures long term success so what i have done what i have written actually i have created a linkage between corporate governance and these theories so that is how you can wrap up an answer with a impactful conclusion as to what is the usage what is the relevance of linking corporate governance with these theories of corporate governance okay so that was the model answer i hope that you must have learned a lot of new things through this session this is just one attempt from our side to guide you better in terms of writing very good answers okay if you have any feedback you can let me know i'm going to provide this particular document in your course also so that you can have a look you as an individual you as a uh, student you have to make sure that whatever valuable inputs are given to you in terms of the comments by the experts uh, in your course or whether it be otherwise try to incorporate them because answer writing is not a one day task you are going to take your own time let's say probably two months time three months time or probably even more sometimes in order to improve the quality of your answer but for that you will have to be consistent okay so that was all about this particular session i hope you enjoyed it if you have any doubts you can let me in the comment section and i hope that you will start practicing answer writing as soon as possible all the best thank you very much for your time